friends welcome back to live at the roxy uh and today we have a very special show because we have a guest that you guys have all been asking for a dear friend of mine even though he ruined what the first episode of world girls was by announcing it on sen it's rb3 <laughs> <laughs> hey roxy sorry about that i didn't mean to stop, stop on your announcement. Kidding. that was my bad that was my bad <laughs> Here's the thing. I just had to throw a little bit of shade because we've been so nice and loving on this show for too long. I had to remind the people uh, out there that I still have my edge to me. That's why we came back with the intro music. You know, I feel like on this show, sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. And today I feel like I'm majorly in fighter mode. So that's why uh, I had to give you shit for that. But RB3, <laughs> I'm really happy you're here. R really, you didn't ruin that. You made that uh world girls happen by coming and filming with us so for anybody who doesn't know he was on set and there's always the biggest joy on set uh but then he leaked it on sen it happens yeah my uh, bad my bad i'm sorry no you don't have you have nothing to be sorry for and i'm so happy that you're here right now um i like to just start with a check-in because i know you guys at home are all feeling all kinds of ways right now but today in this moment rb3 what's going on with you how are you feeling what what's today bring for you um, well, it's just like a, a mixed amount of emotions, you know, seeing everything that's happening in the world and um, seeing, you know, the things that kind of led up to where we're at now. Um, life was already kind of tough with like quarantine and COVID and all that. But now it's like, especially in a different uh, kind of realm. So it's, 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 it's tough, but, you know, trying try my best to get through it. How do you feel like things would be different if we weren't in quarantine right now? Do you feel like protests would be even larger? Do you feel like the quarantine is fueling the protests or do you think that there's no correlation at all? No, I think there's definitely is a correlation. And I think that, you know, uh, the quarantine and the COVID situation is exacerbated. Um, a lot of problems that, you know, a lot of the economic problems that's been facing um, black communities and poor communities and minority communities in general um, you know, the fact that we've reached an unemployment rate that's uh, surpassing Great uh, Great Depression levels, the fact that we've um, gotten to a point where um, the police is receiving more funding in Black communities than um, educational systems, um, I think it's just all co coalescing into a, an area where, you know, people are frustrated, people are tired. And then on top of that, seeing the, the numerous, the countless um, deaths of innocent black men, women, and everyone across the board. Um, this has just been, this is especially during a time when we are in quarantine, when there should be no excuse for police brutality, but yet it still continues and it still exasperates. And, you know, it wasn't just George Floyd last week. There's there's a lot of other deaths too, like Brianna uh, Taylor, right. um, you know, obviously um, Ahmad um, Abari, uh, that at the hands of white supremacy, um, Nina Pop. There's been a, a, num a number, um, Tony, Tony, Tony McDad, Tony McDad, I'm sorry. Um, all of these different um, cases that's been happening over the past um, few weeks that has kind of just been slowly kind of uh, adding fuel to the fire. And, you know, again, it's just frustration. It's just the release of, of, of anxiety around this country. This is something I was thinking about last night, and I don't know if you've had similar thoughts at all, but I know you are correct that it's not just George Floyd, um, but he does seem to be the face of this movement. He does seem to be when we are um, chanting things out or when people are posting pictures, this really has become, um, he, he is, he started a, a revolution. And I think what makes me so sad about that, there's a bajillion things, but he's never going to know that he never gets to know the change, hopefully that he brought. Um, and I'm sure that he didn't believe that when he died, that he was going, that it was going to matter. And I wish that there was some way, and maybe there is somewhere he knows now, some way for him to know that this planet was not fucking okay with what happened. And yeah. that, that he was, he was the impetus for what hopefully will be complete change um, 
especially here in the States. So I, I don't know. Have you been thinking like that at all? My mind has been wandering like crazy, of course, in the last couple of days. Yeah. I mean, you're right. He probably didn't know that he would, uh, that his death would make that kind of impact because frankly, you know, the reason why the Black Lives Matter protest is called Black Lives Matter, because frankly, we don't feel like our lives matter in this country. Um, we have been um, institutionally um, it, the the butt of injustice, of segregation, of economic inequality, of social inequality um, throughout our entirety of uh, our stay in this country. And yet, you know, there's still no kind of replications. They, you know, police officers and white supremacists and all of these people can still get away with taking away our lives without accountability and without um, and without thing without a, a proper justice system. Um, at the same time, uh, a large group of our community is being um, arrested for crimes that shouldn't even frankly be crimes um, and arrested and arrested and brutalized and murdered. When for, you're talking about that RB3, what are you referencing specifically like cannabis crimes or what are you, what are you talking about? Exactly. Nonviolent drug, drug offenses, yeah. um, you know, and it, and honestly, just for, uh, a lot, a lot of issues that our, our community faces. We, like I said before, we have more funding for polices than we do for schools. Um, we have, and and that's a big part of the the Black Lives Matter movement that we're trying. That at least now into and and in the 2020 context, what if you go to the Black Lives Matter website and you look up what the actual goal is? The actual goal is to defund because there's a massive amount of funding. There's a massive amount of militarization. Um, particularly in black communities, um, more per capita than any other community. Um, and, you know, with more authority and with more restraint comes more rebellion and more incentive to do bad. So it's, um, and what, and honestly, you know, and we're probably going to have a conversation about this later, but what, you know, is considered looting and, you know, with the stuff that's happening now, um, I think that's just a minor consequence compared to the bigger social injustice of the loss of lives. Um, there's no monetary value you could put on the life of George Floyd or all the other um, young black people or black people in general taken at the hands of police brutality. There's no dollar value you could put on that. You could put a dollar value on stores and all that kind of stuff. But you can't put a dollar value on um, a human life. I I agree. And and honestly, there is no there is no flow to today's conversation. There is no like we don't need to talk about things later. We can kind of talk about them whenever we want. We will be taking questions. And I see comments from you guys. Also, shout out uh, to your co-host, Sabrina, who's in the chat right now. I see you, Sabrina. Thanks for being hey. here with us. Um, but you guys ask things and we will get to them when we can. But I, I do want to talk about what you just said, RB3, because I I have been searching and really searching because I want to understand for the people who are tweeting about the the looting and saying how horrible it is, every single one of them, I look back and I scroll back on their Twitters to see if they said anything about the deaths, mm. anything, mm -hmm. because I just want to know, I think you're allowed to get upset that if your store is destroyed, you shouldn't be, ha if you have a store and it gets destroyed, that's not something to be happy about. But if you're more, and I've seen people saying this, but if you're more upset about that than you are about somebody's life being taken, then you're fucking doing it wrong and you're mm -hmm. racist. And yeah. that's a word that I, I don't mean to throw out lightly, but like if you went to Twitter because you saw that a Starbucks was burnt down, but you didn't go to Twitter when you saw that George Floyd was strangled to death with a knee, then you're not doing this okay. And I couldn't find one person who was tweeting about the looting, who had tweeted about the deaths. And that's a fucking problem. Yeah, it's a huge problem. And, you know, it's, it, and you, you could go back even further to a lot of those people who are tweeting about the looting and you go back even further in their accounts and they'll talk about, oh, you know, Colin Kaepernick was totally disrespectful in the way he treats the American flag and the way he treats American society, American, the, the national anthem. When in actuality, he was participating in the most nonviolent, peaceful protest you could actually ask for on the biggest platform you could actually ask for. And yet they ridicule him for that. But so, if you kneel, you're protesting the wrong way. And if you fight, yeah. you're protesting the wrong way. It, yeah, they, just, they don't want us to protest. They don't want us to protest. And honestly, frankly, the society that we're built in is, is conducive to an environment that doesn't listen to Black voices. Um, so no matter how much we try to... Um, we try to get our message out there through peace, 
through social media, through peaceful protests, there's always going to be um, there's always going to be detractors. There's always going to be defiance. Um, so now, so but 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 now when the the protest starts to escalate to a different level, which I wouldn't necessarily call violent because violent, you know, has such a negative uh, stigma and connotation to it, and nobody's actually getting hurt. Um, it's just businesses that are that are getting hurt, and the people who are in acting. Plenty of are, people are getting hurt. They're getting shot by rubber bullets, and they've got yep. wounds oh. in their legs and their arms. Yeah, and, yep. and 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 police who are not shooting the rubber bullets into the ground and bouncing, but instead straight into people's faces, uh, mm-hmm. which causes damage. Sorry, every three to interrupt. You can continue, but there are people getting hurt. Yeah, and and all the people, the people who are enacting the actual violence are the police, not just through the murders of all of these um, black individuals, but also through the 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 violence that they've had in the in the protest. I mean, you look at a lot of videos. A lot of the videos show that police are actually the ones that are inciting a lot of these kind of massive, um, you know, quote unquote riots or whatever. Um, right. And 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 it's really sad and it's really is really upsetting. And then you know sometimes in 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 this particular cases like some of the cases in L.A. you look a little deeper and a lot of the protests start out as peaceful demonstrations led by Black Lives Matter and Black communities. But then um, a lot of times the fires and the initial sparks kind of sometimes start from um, white individuals who are who are who 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 are at the protest and they decide to like I saw footage of on the news the other day. Of, of a white Antifa member um, spray painting Black Lives Matter on, on on a Starbucks, but then when they when they write, but then when the news picks up on it and when the media picks up on it, it's screwed and con- misconstrued into a different area. Same yeah. thing that happened in the protest on Saturday in LA um, by the Grove. Um, there was literally um, a, a cop car that was just sitting in the middle of the street during the middle of a presentation, and um, a white guy lit it on fire. And then, and but you know, the media and the news portrays it as these violent black people trying to start an uprising, which is just simply so not the case. Do you wish RB three that white people wouldn't do that? Um, because it, do you feel like? I mean, I'm sure that they are doing. I, I'm guessing that people are doing that because they're f- trying to fight the good fight. But at the same time, it doesn't make necessarily the people who are fighting that fight all look great. What do you wish? I want white people just to fight for us, man. I just want white people to be our allies. I want white people to um, get on our sides and acknowledge when. Uh, they've been problematic in the past and mal- uh, acknowledge when the problematic uh, nature of their actions are lead to consequences in the present. And I think in the cases of these protests and um, and these categorizations that the news are making about um, these organized movements, I think um, if white people are out there, um, you know, having 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 a ball and, and going through a lot of these um you know, uh, violent acts to to start to start and initiate uh, another kind of escalation. Then they should take accountability for that too. That being said, I'm not removing the I'm not removing um, I'm not removing the responsibility of the movement from uh, from from Black people because honestly, um, you know, the Black community is more than entitled to feel angry and to incite whatever kind of fires or looting. Um, that that they want because it's rightfully justified after 400 years of oppression in this country. Right. I I do want to address something in the chat right now that came earlier from Joe King who said liberals love to recklessly and incorrectly use the word racist. That's why the word means nothing anymore. Joe, I want to address that because I'm the one who used that word. And I want to say that I really truly believe that if you care more about a store getting broken into than a man dying on the ground, then you, that is racism and I'm not using it liberally. And I, and it means something. If you give a fuck more about glass being broken and somebody, you know, an insurance company having to pay for Cheesecake Factory getting broken into, which again, I don't condone. It's not good that we are breaking into places. But if you care more about that than you care about somebody who is on the ground begging for his life, then you are racist. That's yeah. what that is. And and we have to say it out loud because it has to be acknowledged. And if that's where you are in life, you need to know that that's what it is. That is what it is. You can't sit there and care more about that and think that you're not racist because that's what it is. So I'm not throwing the word around. I don't think everything on the planet is racist. I think that is fucking racist. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead, RB3. No, exactly. And I think people who refuse to acknowledge that 
um, the the value of Black lives and the value of of people who have have lost their lives to white supremacy and to police brutality. If you want to devalueize that and demoralize that and simplify it to an argument of just looting and merchandise and commercialism and capitalism, um, you're just as much as part of the problem as um, as as frankly the violent police officers and the white supremacists. Right. I I look at the stores that are being destroyed. My hometown is Boston, um, and Boston was, for lack of better words, but it's actually lit on fire yesterday. Um, and also, in LA is my home for over ten years. Los Angeles has been lit on fire. Um, you know, on my street, the I I live right ne- near the Grove, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm in the heart of it, and. There is everything is on fire. There was cop cars on fire outside my um, place, and there I hear sh- rubber bullets or bullets through the night. And mm-hmm. the CVS that's two doors down from me was completely shattered. And do is that ideal? No. Do I think anybody was fucking listening before this? No. So I I can't even I don't condone people going in and breaking into jewelry stores and stealing jewelry. I don't think that that really helps get the job done, but no shit. People are doing that. Of course. Cause look yeah. what we fucking done. Um, so yeah, I just, I just don't even think I don't even have room in my brain to be angry about the looters because I'm too busy being angry about the fact that people are fucking dying. Yes. So maybe if we, if people can stop dying, then the looting will stop. But if people can stop dying, then maybe I get to be angry about the looting. Yeah. But well, not, not until then. Not even just to not even just till people start dying, Roxy. I think the, there's a bigger issue here that is about the institution of race in this country True. that has been totally against us. The reason why people loot and the reason why people are taking advantage of this opportunity. And frankly, I want to I want to clear something up too. I saw yeah. somebody in the chat talk about minority. What about minority-owned businesses? Well, if you go to a lot of if you look at a lot of the protests in Los Angeles and where a lot of these areas are. Uh, of 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 the protests and the looting, a lot of these areas are downtown LA, Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, and um and you know the west 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 Los Angeles area, which frankly has a minute black population and virtually no black owned businesses. Um, so whenever we go into whenever you look at the news and they say, well, why are you destroying your own community? In this case, in this particular instance, it's symbolic of the fact that we are not destroying our own community. We're trying to show that look. There's nothing for our community to take from. There's nothing here. I'm from Compton, California. I live here. There's no, what What are they going to loot? The liquor store? I mean, there's literally nothing. I mean, there's, I mean, and that's, and that is the bigger issue here, and right? That's a problem. Yeah. That's, that's the bigger problem. We're, there's no, we don't have, we don't have proper um, economic security. I don't know that it's security. a bigger problem than people dying, but I do no, think that is not, it. Yeah. It's, not, it's definitely not a bigger problem. The, the death, the, the death and dying of people you know, is, is crucial. And like I say, you can't put the dollar amount to that, but as part of the whole overall system of racism goes, yes, there yeah. is economic um, injustice that can, that can and should be rectified. Uh, you know, um, there should be higher funding towards um, education in, in our communities. There should be uh, small business opportunities in our community, small, uh, more access to small business loans in our community. Um, frankly, I think there should be respirations, honestly, because I think if if we are given a, enough of a platform to allow for economic advancement and economic movement to pull ourselves out of poverty and given the opportunity that we were promised um, at the uh at the onset of the em- emancipation approximation, we were promised 40 acres and a mule. If we were, if we were actually given that opportunity to rise and above and given political power as well, we can make the changes, but we're not even given the opportunity to try and make the changes. So right. I want to get to some of you guys in the chat right now. Um, I, I know that you guys are just as big of a fan of RB3 as I am starting with you, Deontay, uh, who says RB3, just with multiple exclamation points. Hey. Uh, that's what I'm shouting to RB3. I said it in my tweet, but you have the best laugh in the whole business. And I, I hate not hearing you laugh right now, but I know we've got we've got too much work to do. So going yeah. to Sally Mercedes in here, sending love to everyone. Hashtag justice for James Skurlock. Um, I saw that Sally, you responded to my tweet because I don't know if you saw this RB3, but I where I am is on a 1 p.m. curfew today. Did you see that? Uh, in that- LA? 
Or, not all of LA. It's Beverly Hills, Santa Monica. There's like a few different spots that are 1 p.m. curfews. Oh, wow. Um, which is, I mean, that's not even. So today I woke up and I'm doing work. And all of a sudden I at 1130 in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. So I was already in the middle of work. I saw there was going to be a 1 p.m. curfew. And I was like, I don't even have time to get food. I don't even know what I'm. So I, I ordered groceries to come immediately because I was like, they're saying today, probably tomorrow where, and that's the problem. Like, like you just said, RB3, people are trying to take the protests to the affluent um, white areas. And keep in mind, I live in a fucking garage, so I'm not calling myself affluent by any means, but that's where I live. And that now they're shutting it down at 1 PM. It's like, that's so fucked up. Yeah. One, 1 PM. You can't even, there's, like that's crazy the rest of la is at four and even 4 p.m is crazy so yeah. uh sally i saw that that made you pretty angry and i agree i can't fucking even believe it larry lee says guys subscribe to the meaning of podcast uh we need <laughs> we need at least a few of those coming in throughout guys uh yeah. keep on shouting it out larry also said guys hit that like button rb3 you are the bomb Hey, where can I buy some Tashi Covert com converters? What's the Tashi <laughs> converter? Uh, that's from my uh, Luke Skywalker impression, you know. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I gotta go to the to, to Tashi converters. But um, but um, but no. I mean, if you want to buy Tashi converters, donate to any and all uh, Black Lives Matter uh, organization. Uh, that you know, you could pick up your Tashi converters there. I'm glad you just mentioned that because I forgot to start this stream with, in case you guys didn't see on Twitter, um, yesterday on this show, I I can't even believe it. I was coming in here thinking, this is honestly what I thought, RB3. I was like, I'm hoping we can make 250 bucks. Like, I think that that would be so great if we could make 250 um, to donate. Uh, and I was just thinking we would give to George Floyd's memorial fund and that goes to his family. Uh, but then I talked to Winston and he had this connection with Philando Castile and his fund um, feeding the children. And I was like, okay, so we'll split the two fifty or whatever we make between the two. And um, yesterday, because of you guys, we made, it was, I think 1926 or something. Oh, so close to 2000 freaking dollars wow. um, after YouTube takes their obnoxious cut. But it was, that was what was left afterwards. And that is real. That is real money mm -hmm. that we, that, and I posted cause I wanted you guys to see, not that you doubted it, but that I, I posted pictures of the receipts from the GoFundMe because I think just think it's kind of shady when people don't do that. I want everybody mm -hmm. to know exactly where their fucking money is going. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was incredible, you guys, that we were able to do that. And I'm so proud to uh, I'm so proud to be able to. Uh, and, you know, things happen for a reason. But if this hadn't if what happened at Collider hadn't happened at Collider, I never would have started this channel and I wouldn't have been able to have you guys as this amazing community and that would have been 2000 less dollars that got supported and, and donated to black lives matters. And honestly, I'm so fucking proud of you guys. Um, so sorry to take the floor for a second, RB three, but no, that's, keep, that's awesome. That's keep donating and supporting. And I was just like, I felt like that's why today I said, I'm ready to fight because yesterday I felt like this fucking matters. And as I'm sitting here watching my subscribers numbers go down and my followers go down with all these, people who I'm so fucking happy to lose because if you don't want to be part of a YouTube community that's raising money for Black Lives Matters and I'm not the right fucking community to be a part of anyway so shoe fly don't bother me but I'm watching all that going down laughing like we did something today and we're talking about this and this matters so um, everybody at home pat yourself on the back but thank you guys for being a part of this awesome community I'll keep reading your comments I swear sorry to again take the floor for that uh, DGMC says pandemic economic crisis civil unrest that's three strikes is america out things will never be the same could be the fall of an empire i've been hearing this a lot recently rb3 what do you think do you think that this do you think things will change for the better for the worse what do you see happening in the next few months um i mean frankly honestly i don't see much good happening honestly i don't think they're um, I don't think we're in a position as a country to really recover from all of this fully. I mean, we're kind of seeing a lot of different things happening at once, like 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 said here, um, a pandemic to which we've never seen this kind of level of escalation before. Right. Um, you know, economic depression with record levels of unemployment, 
And um, which is also really, really scary because, um, you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of the hardest hit areas in this in this um, in this pandemic and in, in this economic distress comes from black and minority communities. Um, that's where a lot of these layoffs hit the hardest. Um, and then, you know, and then you go on to the actual civil unrest. Now, I'd hope that, you know, there's not there's there's frankly, I don't know if there is going to be an end to the protest or the solution. It probably is because there's always going to be an end to the protest and they're always going to go out of their way to suppress whatever movements they can, even if that includes a full on lockdown. They'll probably right. do their best to stamp this out. But these issues that the black community is facing are never going to be resolved because it's generational. It's you, lifelong. You really don't think that there, you don't think then, because that makes me feel like this doesn't matter. And I would like to think that we can change as a society and as, and as not only a country, but a world. And I want to think that these protests do matter and that we will see justice and that we will see arrests be made where arrests need to be made and that we will see these changes. You're telling me you don't think that's ever going to happen. I think, I think we're going to, I think eventually this particular issue of the George Floyd situation is going to come to a resolution. Um, they might arrest all four officers. Who knows if they're actually going to charge them? There's a big part of me that I even highly doubt they're going to charge these officers, honestly, um, and even charge them, even prosecute them. I, it just, you know, just going from history, it, it's oh. just tough to even imagine that just based on all the other cases we've seen. Right. Um, but then beyond that too, like, even if they even if they went out of their way and prosecuted all four of these officers and um and 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 I don't know, you know, obviously the George Floyd uh GoFundMe has raised a lot of money. Um hopefully the, the city maybe get you know, the city of uh, Minneapolis uh cuts the family another check. Hopefully maybe that helps. But I think again, there has to be greater institutional change in order to really fully ease the unrest of the black community. And but you frankly, believe that can happen or you don't? I, I frankly I don't. I mean oh I just I, I, I don't believe it's gonna happen anytime soon at least, especially in the economy that we're in right now. Again, I think to to, to me, again, this these are these are my this is my opinion. I think we the the kind of things that we gotta look for is ending the war against black people from the police. That includes decriminalizing, that includes ending over policing, defunding the police departments and putting more money and resources into education and businesses and to the individual livelihood of black America. Um, but right now it looks like this country is in a position that isn't even ready to start providing resources to the rest of America, um, mm -hmm. except for like the corporations, um, which is really sick because they use the term when 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 they talk about our strike, our fight, and our struggle, and our kind of um, and 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 our protest through looting and 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 taking out businesses or whatever, going to businesses. Um, they never talk about the looting that the big corporations did and the billionaires did to our system in general. I mean, there was a report that came out, I believe, last week or a couple of weeks ago that the United States American billionaires got $438 billion richer during this pandemic, richer. They are, and, and there's other reports that, you know, the, the, the uh, banks- that, I can't even fathom what you just said. It's, I mean- what, it, what is that number again? $438 billion richer. How and that's is according that possible? To, that's according to MSNBC too. And it's because, oh. it's frankly because- the bailouts. I mean, the they the United States government when they signed the Protection Act that cut everybody a little twelve hundred dollar check. What was also part of that bill was cutting four point five trillion dollars worth of relief funds to corporations and massive businesses. Um, so it's like they took four point five trillion dollars for the corporations, but then if you add up the grand total of how much they spent on just a little twelve hundred dollar checks, it comes up to like 500 billion. So it's like, they give us a percentage of the, uh, they give us a percentage of a fraction of what they give the, the billionaires and the wealthy class and the, and the corporations, but they don't even look out for the people at the bottom. And, and it, it's just, it's, it's, it's unfeathered capitalism. I don't even know if it's capitalism. I think I personally call it socialism for the rich and 
uh, and, 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 and rigged capitalism for, for us at the bottom. So until they are able to realign the structures and re-put the country back into a place where we could actually start moving and get changes towards the betterment of the American people, then I think we're going to start heading towards a better position. But change is slow. Progress is slow. Yeah, I know. And I don't want it to be slow, but that's just wish. That's just me thinking that everybody's capable of change when I've seen that they're not. And, you know, that uh, that's such a tough reality. Um, the prince that wasn't promised the justice system is broken for profit prisons, racial profiling laws uh, that unequal, unequally target inner city and low income neighborhoods all need to go. That's a big nod from RB3 uh, and for me as well. Thank you for saying something, Prince, that wasn't promised. Um, also, I just saw somebody that I scrolled by. Um, I'll get back to these super chats, but maybe let's pop into the Patreon and see what's going on in here. Because I know that there were some questions for RB3 um, that I want to make sure that we get to. <laughs> some of these are completely unrelated. But okay, we'll <laughs> start with uh, Robert McNeil, who said... Uh, how do you feel about the crew strikes threatening to happen in Hollywood? If you are not directing, what other positions on the set do you feel comfy in? So I know that this isn't seemingly completely related, but RB3, you were talking about jobs and being nervous uh, nervous about the economics of all of this. So kind of related to that aspect. What do you think? Uh, how, what do you think about this? Um, I mean, yeah, work work has definitely slowed up for me personally, even you know, I'm at the I'm at the bottom tier of Hollywood. Honestly, you know, I do a lot of PA gigs for TV shows and and movies and and reality shows and all that kind of stuff. So really, I frankly, you know, it's it's hit me hard too. But you know, I'm hoping to build myself up and 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 hopefully, you know, use this quarantine as an opportunity to go on my own creative endeavors. So hopefully, by the end of it, I could you know not have to um, not have to worry about concerns of being employed through like a crew or a production set and just start making my own funds. I mean, I know that's an ambitious goal, but. But like, I feel you on that. That's what I, I think. That's what we're all trying to do right now. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's fucking hard, but yeah, it, it's also seemingly like the only option right now. Yeah. I mean, thankfully I live with my parents. Um, so I'm not w in, under an, an enormous amount of economic burden at this exact moment, but you know, I feel for everybody who's work who, who who who's in who's in the film industry and are at these you know kind of below the line positions that um, a lot of us are at and frankly don't have any opportunities to work right now. Right, uh, and and people in post production are going to have even longer um, if they're not on gigs right now. Mm -hmm. Lewis Cox said, "Hey, Roxy and RB three, you guys are awesome. I feel like giving you this. Thanks, Lewis Cox. Really appreciate that." Um, is that a refrigerator behind you? What are we looking at? Shelves? Uh, bunch of food? I oh. love looking at... No, no, in his picture. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love looking at their pictures. Everybody's got something to, to say via picture. Oh, um, again, we're going all over the place. Okay, so we'll lighten it up for a second here, RB3. This one's coming from Donnie A, who said, who would you put in an all-time starting five for Lakers players? So for all the Lakers, time. who's all-time starting five? I like this. I need a little bit of a... You got to yeah. take a break every once in a while to talk some yeah. some sports and some shit. No, no, you you you, you got it. That's 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 crucial at this point. Um if we're talking all time five, I mean this is this is going to be kind of, you know, that's that's hilarious. Um cuz the Lakers have literally had like the greatest players of all time. Yeah. So I probably put Kareem as center, um Shaq as power forward. Um I probably put um LeBron as small forward. Um, Kobe is shooting guard and LeBron and I'm sorry, um, Magic Johnson as, um, as, uh, as, uh, why am I forgetting the other position? Uh, shoot, shooting guard and yeah, the other guard. Yeah. So I'll put, I'll put LeBron point, point guard. There we go. Boom. Um, I don't know why that lost me so, no, so bad. Cause I think there's a lot going on in that head right now. So yeah, it's okay yeah. that you can't remember the word point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, talk about the best starting five of all time. That would be, I mean, that's like. That would be f ridiculous. It would be, un uh, be unbeatable. So that's, that's, that's crazy. Glenn Caesar in here says, Hello, Roxy and RB3. First off, much love to you both during these increasingly crazy times. I'm glad that you're both staying safe and stay and being safe. Glad to have you on the show, RB3, and that you're a member of the hashtag Rockstars Band. Here's my question for the both of you. 
What kind of music do you like to listen to when you just want to get away from it all so that you can relax and unwind or to lift your spirits and put you in a good place, perhaps even while enjoying some cannabis? I think that's to me. Thank you. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular artist or song that really does it for you? RB3, what are you, are you listening to anything during this time? Um, I would just been listening to older songs, honestly, um, old tracks, stuff from the nineties, um, stuff like that. But I, I probably, in terms of it, and I, I personally love like movie soundtracks too. Me too. Um, Me too. Especially during this time. I love something that tells a story that I don't have to like mess with or change anything just kind of goes through. Right. No, literally, I literally, um, I, I listen to so much and frankly, one of my favorite composers is John, John Bryant. Um, you know, he, he did, um, like eternal sunshine, spotless mind. And, mm-hmm. um, so good. and uh, I think he did lady bird too. And he's done a lot of them and he's one of my favorite composers. So I just love listening to his music. Um, you know, during, during this quarantine. I don't, I think that my answer is like, it's forever changing. Um, and it kind of depends, like I said today on my mood, sometimes I, some days I feel really defeated and sad and I listen to some sadder stuff. Uh, the national is really good for that. They're on a lot of movie soundtracks as well. Mm-hmm. And some days I feel like fucking fighting. And I, I mean, I'm a massive old school Kanye person when I'm feeling like, mm-hmm. I just, Oh my God, I'm obsessed with him. Uh, and, and like, I don't know something about after he, with the Forbes billionaire stuff, I was like just on a tear with him for a minute. So, mm-hmm. but it just depends. It depends. Um, Going back to what you said before, Alexander Wilson said James Worthy over LeBron uh, did it longer. What do you think? That's that's a hot take, and I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't I don't think that's that's arguable. I mean, James Worthy is definitely a legend, definitely better. But over but LeBron, I don't know. No, nah, not not better than LeBron. No, no, no. I like that you. That's your like nice way of saying it. That's a hot take. That's a hot take. <laughs> I uh, love Worthy. I love I love James Worthy. If there's a six man, he'd definitely be the six man for sure. But that that wasn't the question, so we can't include it. Weston Iron here says hashtag Roboxy. So Weston's always trying to give me ship names with the guests. So <laughs> that's our ship name. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. I'll go with it. What do you do to prepare for dealing with cancel culture? This cancel culture that we live in. Hopefully not try to bury facts by lying and then sort of admitting the truth like a certain Birds of Prey director just did. I didn't see that. Also, the meaning of is on YouTube. It's a daily thing for me when I have time. Uh, That's awesome. Thank you. What do you do to try to prepare for cancel culture? Um, I don't know the answer to this necessarily. RB3, anything that you've done to prepare for cancel culture? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't I don't think I say anything cancelable wordy and but yeah. I mean I don't think, you know, I don't I don't even sometimes I even question if like cancel culture is even real. You know, to some extent there's definitely um when there's big cases like actual assaults or actual, you know, um things of 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 you know whatever, it you know there is a, there is an effect but a lot of times when it's just tweets like it might be a thing for a lot of people for like six months or a year and then they're back to back to where they're at before. So I yeah. mean, sometimes I even question if, if it's even a real thing. I've definitely done some stupid shit uh, and I can't deny it because I'm on camera for 70 hours a week for the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know anything specific that I've done, but I'm sure at some point if I get famous enough, somebody will pull up something of me, like me the other day with all the, um, uh, what the Snyder stuff. And one time on Collider Live, I called Zack Snyder. I said, he's acting like a moron, you know? Mm. And I, I don't even remember saying that. And that's not that that's cancel culture worthy, but pe- the amount of hate that I got for that. And I deserve right. to get, you shouldn't say that. So like, I don't know in the, in the thousands and thousands of hours that I've been talking, mm. but there's nothing to really prepare because I don't say I, I might say that, but I'm not going to say something that's racist, sexist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, because that's not in my heart. So if the, the worst thing I'm doing is calling somebody a moron, then I'm just hoping that the Internet. Yeah, people, moves people, forward. people say a lot worse things on the Internet and are just chilling. So, yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> I wish I was just chilling. Uh, go, <laughs> going into the Streamlab, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. A couple comments um, that came in from since yesterday. 
Grumpy G said Black Lives Matters. Can't imagine how it is to be anything but white, but I'm trying, but I can't. So I just can show my support. Wish I could do more. Uh, appreciate that, Grumpy G. Thanks for saying something. Michael Kotzer says, thank you for the conversation. Thank you, Michael Kotzer, for that. Ben Rayner said, hey, Roxy, great stream with you and Winston yesterday. And congrats with all the donations. Um, hi, hi, RB3. Hope you guys are staying safe. Um, trying, trying to stay safe. And anytime anybody says stay safe, I actually think of it differently now, RB3, because it's like when I don't feel safe, I think about how lucky I am that every day of my life I usually do feel safe and how if I was black, I wouldn't feel that way. So I, I just, even the sentence like stay safe, I just think of it differently now. Um, yeah. I mean, that's something that, you know, and they touch on this and and a couple of Spike Lee movies like Chirac and, but frankly, it's a real life thing when, uh, kid, when black kids and black youth leave their houses like or black anybody when anybody black leaves their house always what we say to each other is stay safe stay safe be safe like that's the last thing we always say because there is a legitimate fear that you know we we have fear from white supremacists we have fear from the police and the authorities we have fear from all of these different angles and we have you know fears from um just just being just being just being black in america in general so it's it's you always gotta you always gotta be you always gotta you always gotta acknowledge you know, being safe and, 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 and participating in that. So I appreciate that to Ben. Um, Glenn in here says, uh, hello, Roxy and RB3. Thank you for both. Thank you both for getting together and doing this show with all of us today. I'm so glad to have this great community to spend time with. As always, I hope that you all have the best Monday that you possibly can, given the circumstances. Thanks, Glenn. What a nice mm -hmm. comment. Um, I'm so grateful to have this community too. Thank freaking gosh. Uh, I think this is based on what you just said, RB3, is take your time, something that you guys say yeah. often too. Take your time. Yeah, you just got, yeah, exactly. Thanks, like, Deontay Wimbish, for the support. Yeah, exactly. Take your time, huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like I just, uh, I'm, I'm glad how open people's eyes are, including mine right now. Um, and I think they need to be this way. So thanks for, thanks for continuing to teach me and everybody um luke nelson says as kanye fans are you disheartened by his silence currently i'd also love to hear your thoughts on killer mike's speech from over the weekend we talked a little bit about killer mike's speech yesterday um but i, I would love to hear your thoughts on this rb3 and also about kanye um yeah i love killer mike's speech um he's advocating for not um per, you know for obviously not looting and and and, and all that kind of stuff um, I totally agree with his stance. Um, I agree with any 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 uh, pro protest stance because at the end of the day, he was pro protest and he was pro getting your voice out there and expressing yourselves. I think in the case of Killer Mike and Atlanta, um, Killer Mike's talking about a situation where like Atlanta has a lot, a, a much more flourishing black community and a lot more flourishing black businesses. So looting that takes place there. Um, could be more hurtful towards detrimental, uh, yeah. more detrimental to our community than it would be uh, helpful. Um, but in, in terms of the Kanye thing, I mean, I, I love old Kanye. I love what he used to stand for. I love like, you know, everything about Kanye, like pre 2015, 2016. Um, but I think we know where he stands now. And I, I don't, I don't know if I want to hear what he has to say about yeah, that now. That's my thing too, RB3. It's like, am I upset that he's staying silent? I think it speaks volumes about anybody who's staying silent right now. And probably the people who are staying silent, we don't necessarily really want to hear what they have to say. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I miss the Kanye that I fell in love with. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, and like the Kanye who three days after his mom passed was performing for his fans because that's how close he felt to his fans and how much that support meant to him and how connected he was. Um, I miss mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But it, but you're right. It's just not who he is right now. And that is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Going back in here in the stream lab, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Cousin Vinny says, I know a lot of people in the Schmodown space 
And it's been very disheartening to see so many that I like stay silent or say they are struggling to find the right words. It's either you believe BLM or you don't. Silence is compliance. Stay RB3 and rocks. Um, yeah, what do you think about this RB3? How are you feeling about some of our peers that are not speaking up? Are you looking for that? Have you noticed that? Do you have any thoughts on it at all? Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've always noticed, frankly. I mean, I've always noticed before I even worked for the show. Um, I've always been a fan of the Schmoes, no people and everything. Um, pre this, um, you know, before I started working for right. Schmodown and being on SCN and all that stuff. Like, um, and I've always noticed, and I've always, you know, I've always noticed. But I, you know, in this, in this, in this instance, I have noticed a lot more people speaking up. I have in and and in, in, in this instance, I have noticed people like Christian tweeting Black Lives Matter, people like Mark making Instagram posts. Um, you know, a lot of people are speaking up in this case. Um, I haven't really been noticing people who haven't been speaking up because frankly, my Twitter feed is just full of, you know, activists and uh, retweets and donation links that I have been doing my best to try and contribute to. Um, and yeah, it's just um, you know. I, I know silent people and I know I know some for some for some reason some people feel like they don't want to speak on issues but you know at the end of the day to me like uh, at the end of the day it, this is not a political issue this is not politics like human life is not politics racism race in this country is not political there's no debate there's no discussion there is an inherently racist system that 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 has built that has been built on this in this country the idea of capitalism the idea of working the idea of working for somebody in order to 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 build profits for um you know individual individuals or corporations was an idea that originated in america through slavery um so we have a system that's literally we have a capitalist system in this country that is literally built on racism so it's like you know, if whether or not people want to acknowledge that or not, that's their personal choice. But uh, don't go out there and try and silence p- other people who are trying to make that movement and denounce other people who are trying to make that, uh, frankly, clear. Um, that's what upsets me more. The, the things, you know, I would, you know, being silent is not cool, but, you know, it's whatever. But what's even worse is when people when people speak against the movement. And that's when that's when I get offended personally. I think that you have every right in the world to get offended by that. I, I think it would be crazy if you didn't. Mm-hmm. Breed X says, thank you, Rox, for using your platform to be an ally for us black people. Hashtag BLM. Um, I promise always. Always. Yeah. So um, Thank you, Roxy. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having Winston yesterday. I yeah, really appreciate it. There's nothing to thank. Um, I, To me, it's not a question. It's a no fucking brainer. And... Um, I, I do see some people saying, I can't even specifically name names because I don't know. I scroll so quickly and like get so frustrated, but I do see people saying often, like, I, um, you know, I don't use my platform for this reason. I think it was Ace maybe the other day who said, like, I've heard people say that in the past. You don't get to say it anymore. Like, you don't get to say you don't mm-hmm. use your platform for this because. Then, then what the fuck do any of us have a platform for? What do what do we have it for? So I don't know. I I don't. I I hear people when they say like I don't talk politics or that's not my show. But like, if you're going on air and you're not talking about this at all, like I get it. If you're doing a movie podcast, you're going to mostly talk about movies. But like, how are you going to not fucking address this at all? Right. It's it's too it's too prevalent. Like. In the same way, it's obviously different, but I've seen a lot of comparisons to 9-11, and some of the comparisons are so idiotic, it's crazy. But in the same way that you wouldn't go on air and not talk about 9-11 because it's not a fucking political issue. Mm-hmm. It, like, it's it's happening in, in here and now. So um, I, I just appreciate that you guys want to come on the show and are willing to talk about it because I'm sure it's fucking exhausting to continue to have to talk about this i'm sure it's fucking exhausting but so thank you for being here rb3 um i want to get to some more of these shane miller says with schools the way we fund school with schools the way we fund schools is not right 
We need to collect all school funds for the entire state in one fund, then redistribute to every school equally. That yes. way it's even and fair. Every life is valuable. We all need the same treatment. Um, I don't even know how school funds work right now. It's based on testing, right? Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is so stupid because you get more money, the better your school does. But how is your school supposed to do any better if you don't have more money? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I'm, even understand. I mean, I, I for somebody who does, doesn't know much about it, this I know. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. that doesn't fucking make sense. And then they, some, some schools do it based on the number of people who are in school. Some, some, some funding comes, you know, some percentage of it comes to like attendance or something like that. So it's all just weird and twisted. And like, 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 like that question said, there's not equal distribution and that's, you know, that's a big problem too. And, you know, we got to remove, we got to, we got, we got to take that away. We got to um, start putting more focus and more emphasis on, um, on, 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 on equality and equity. Uh, that makes me so frustrated because it goes back to what you're talking about, which is just like, how how are we supposed to grow when mm. we can't even fucking do that? That should be the most simple thing. Like, it's a public school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's public schools. So how the fuck are people getting different treatments in public right. school? Well, even, even beyond public schools, and I think this is one of the agendas that one of, uh, uh, you know, that originated from um, the Black Lives Matter movement is that we need to increase federal funding for HBCUs, uh, for historically black colleges and universities, um, because that is a way that we can encourage more black youth and black individuals to go to college and be surrounded by people of their peers and, um, and start gaining, like I said, political power so we can have a voice at the top of the ladder rather than screaming and setting fires at the bottom. Still more comments coming in, guys. You are amazing. Um, Morse code Z says yesterday's stream was amazing. Thank you. Always good to see even a non laughing RB3 sharing with us all. Hope you stay safe. Uh, yeah, I agree. RB3 and I'll take RB3 in any form I can get them. Uh, just, just grateful that you're here. Jake Yacoveta said something also. Jake said, if you missed it, James Mangold had a great thread on Twitter about cops not living in the community they police, so they don't have any attachment to it or the people. I did miss that. Did you see that? I did see that. I did see that. And that's very true. And that's frankly, that's that's very, very true. And I think another issue besides like defunding police departments and, you know, uh, putting more emphasis on um, on on things on on things that are more centric towards are um, the better men of the black community, we also need to focus on training these police officers better too. Um, the fact that you have to go to school for six to eight years to become a lawyer and to practice law, but in order to enforce law and to be the practitioner of law, you only need a six week training program. That makes no sense. It makes no uh, sense. Yeah. So I think personally, you know, we should, we should require police police to have four years of in-depth training of how to become a police officer and better community understanding. And because I, frankly, I think personally, if people go to school and they learn a lot more about the communities that they're supposed to be representing and learning about the actual governance of law and, and things like that, we will be avoiding a lot of these cases. I completely agree because of so many reasons, but th these police officers don't know what they're doing being the main one. And when they do things like, like what we've seen that it's, you just so easily could have avoided that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason they're, they aren't trained to do so. So I, it's essential. It's essential. I mean, you talk about lawyers, same thing with doctors. When you, when people's lives are in your hand, you cannot be held to the same standard as somebody who who doesn't have to do who doesn't have the power to have somebody's life in their hand and if you are a police officer and we are putting our lives in your hands then you have to be treated like a lawyer or a doctor mm -hmm. who who has earned that spot um six weeks that's egregious um mm. going back into some of these chats uh dgmc some people put their own shit over everything else a movement business silence or a life we're all the heroes of our own stories. 
I think that's true. I think people convince themselves that even if they're staying silent, they're not a bad person or that, you know, it's important for them to uh, whatever, whatever they convince themselves of. So I do find a lot of hero syndrome or whatever it's called. Um, mm -hmm. so I agree mm -hmm. with that. The prince that wasn't promised says here, most of the money comes from taxes. The school district I went to has a school budget over 130 million a year. Wow. Wait, what does that even mean? I mean, is he a uh, prince who wasn't promised? Is he in Canada or I'm guessing know. that's where he said that's where most of the money comes from taxes. I think money for money for 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 our schools come in taxes, come from taxes, too. Um, I think a little bit from the lottery department, too. But like overall, um, but 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 overall, it's still massively underfunded um, just across the board, not even for Black America, specifically for Black America. It is extremely underfunded, but just education in general should be a higher priority in this country. Gene Burnsed says, right now, all I can say is love y'all. Thank you. I'll take that love. It's not mm -hmm. enough of it right now. So I appreciate that. Preston Bryant says, Black Experience in Japan. Check out their latest live stream. They had a ton of different Black voices from around the world. The question of the stream was, is it time to leave America? I learned a lot. Yeah, this came up on the show yesterday, too. Have you heard about this, RB3? I haven't heard about this, no. Um, yeah, know. neither had I, and neither had Winston, but um, apparently it was a, a, it's definitely something worth watching. Um, I can't even believe, is it time to leave America, is a, is a question that people are having to address, but uh, I, I'm hearing from multiple people. It's worth watching. So thanks for bringing that to our attention again. Uh, the prince that wasn't promised to clarify is not nah, New York. Local school taxes go to pay for most of it here on Long Island. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. I, I, I think that things are shady too, because like, I don't know, I don't feel like information is readily accessible for me to figure out how and where exactly money and finances even go from, exactly. from our taxes for our schools. Like, the reason I don't know the answer is because I'm not putting in the time to find them, but I shouldn't have to put the time in to find that. It should just be very accessible to know how things are working. Um, yeah. going back, oh, sorry. Go ahead, RB3. No, I, I, I totally agree. I think they should start sending people like a breakdown for every single tax dollar that they pay exactly where it's going, but they don't yeah. do that. So. No. Uh, going back into the stream labs, A. Torres says, American institutions work to protect corporations and use... TVAS, TVAS, a compliance apparatus. I don't know what that is. Racism exists everywhere, but it is sad to see the level it does in the U.S. when Black citizens helped build the build the country. Solidarity with African Americans from the U.K. Um, thank you for saying something. What is TVAS? To, oh no, the, sorry. It, you, to use TV as a compliance apparatus. That's what. It oh, is. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> TV as. Um, yeah, I I agree with everything you just said, and I do wonder what it is like in other countries right now. Um, I haven't been keeping. I, I'm so in. I'm so in the trenches right now, like tr just trying to focus on what I can do to help that. I haven't been looking what's going, is anything going on in the UK? Do you have any idea what's going on? Not in the States right now in regards to, are there uh, peaceful protests going on or anything like that? RB3. Um, from what I lost out, what I last saw on Twitter, I believe there are pro peaceful protests um, happening in, in London, but again, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. I don't know either. I'll definitely have to look into it. Uh, Sugar gum says, Looking forward to Gal Gadot's rendition of Fuck the Police, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the follow-up to Imagine. I, I have a feeling she won't do a rendition to that. Anyway, uh, Roxy, I love that you've dedicated streams to this issue. And although I think this is RB3's first time on live, you've had multiple black people on here before this. Stay safe. You too. Um, yeah, I've wanted RB3 to come on for a really long time. Uh, and I'm, I'm really glad that it finally did line up this week. Um, and obviously I've had Winston on before, uh, but I would like, I, this is what I'm starting to realize RB3. Like it's pathetic. What small amount of black people are in our digital space because they haven't been given the platform. And so like, I, uh, I want to have not, not just black people, non-white people. I hope that this is a stream in which 
people of all different backgrounds can come on. Um, and so I'm always asking you guys at home, if you know somebody that you want to have on the stream, please let me know. Uh, cause I, there's so many people that I want to get and I just, it's ridiculous that people have not been given any kind of platform. So I hope this can be a place for people. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's fucking crazy. Um, but this is your first time on the show. What a, what a strange first time. What a strange week to be on here. Strange isn't the right word, but right. I'm just happy you're here. RB three. Uh, and you're welcome back anytime, literally anytime you want to come back. Uh, Thank you course julian says forgive my ignorance as a european but how is it possible that obama did seemingly nothing to better the whole situation or did he and it just hasn't doesn't show love from germany stay strong what do you make of that rb3 what do you think this is where it comes a little tricky right um i think you know i think there is something to be said that the fact that you know barack obama has never actually said the words black lives matter. I think that's, that's big. And, and it's kind of, I didn't realize that even today in his medium piece, did that not, was that not in there? No. And he, and he, and he's made it almost seemingly a point throughout his presidency to not say it. Um, and has he ever been asked about that? He's been asked and he just, I don't know if he's been asked like directly, like why he won't say it, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a conversation piece since 2012 when the Trayvon Martin situation um, first happened. And, you know, Obama has done great things for uh, black Americans. He has um, done more to uplift um, certain communities and to kind of, uh, he, he's done, a, he's done a lot to kind of ease a lot of the economic gaps that were happening. Now, a lot of those gaps got re exasperated um, because of COVID and because of just the new right. administration in general. But um, in terms of like actually being active in, 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 in these protests, it's been, it's been a little hard to see him not um, embrace. It's been a little hard to see him not embrace that. That being said, though, he, he, is, he is a figure in the Black community. He's one of our modern leaders, and we always got to appreciate him and we got to respect him. And I think that it's just indicative that not all the Black experience is not a monolithic experience. He can interpret the situation any way he chooses to. Um, and, and that's his prerogative. And that's his prerogative. And we should just be okay with people having their own prerogative. I, I have another thing I've been thinking about a lot recently I want to get your thoughts on is I don't feel like this would be the situation we were in if Obama was currently president. What do you think? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think right now we're, we're we've been in a he- much more heated um, and more divided um, space in terms of politics, um, in terms of in terms of uh, in terms of racial racial relationships and class relationships. I think we've um, been in that kind of state for um, a while now. Obviously, the police killings were happening during his time in presidency, um, but frankly, they're happening before he was president either. Right. Um, what's interesting is that with the Black Lives Matter movement um, and with, you know, the fact that we see the deaths of like George Floyd and uh, Fid- uh, uh, Fidel Castro and um, I'm sorry, uh, Fidel Castro, Jesus. Um, that's okay, Philando that, Castile. Philando Castile, yeah. Jesus. Um, no, that's Fetty- okay. There's, I told you there's a lot going on in that brain. You're allowed yeah. to have some brain farts right now. I keep having them too. Exactly. But my, my total apologies. Um, but like with Eric Gardner, Trayvon Martin, um, Walter Scott, Sandra Bland, like all of these names um, that kind of and Michael Brown, if I had already said them. But uh, but with, with 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 a lot of these movements, a lot of a lot of that stuff was captured on camera. So we see it on camera. Right. What's scary is what was happening before the age of cameras and social medias where it wasn't easily amplified to get get that message out there, because this was probably happening a lot more and a lot more frequent during that time period. Right. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I think that I, I just think that we have the worst case scenario with, with Trump right now. I think anybody, I think a a fucking toad would be better. Like, yeah, like literally anybody. Um, This is speaking of presidents, uh, Felipe Hunt or Philip Hunt says, it sucks that Joe Biden, who's been wrong on so many things, and yet since Trump is awful, he'll become president and do nothing to change it. Bernie 2020. I mean, like I just said, I don't know how you feel, RB3, but I feel like 
and anybody over Trump. Anybody yeah. over Trump. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not the biggest Joe Biden fan. Um, but at the end of the day, he's a he's definitely unequivocally a much better candidate than 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 Trump. Um, you know, I have a tough time even getting behind the Biden camp because he wrote the 94 crime bill that kind of affected right. communities in a lot of really terrible ways. Um, and I hate that we keep getting in this situation where we vote for like the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Um, but you know, in this case, I just, I just, you know, I'm going to do my best to, to back Biden, but frankly, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, just based on where the country is at, I don't know. I really don't know where this election is going. Like yeah, you maybe. think it'll be, you think it'll be obvious that, Trump wouldn't be in there just because of all of this, but then, you know, you never know. So I don't Still know. So much support. Can I ask you, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but who you were backing initially? I was Bernie. I was always Bernie. Yeah. I've always been Bernie. Um, Cause I just think that he's probably the most consistent. He, you know, he was the most consistent on a lot of the issues, um, you know, and just in general. Yeah. Um, and he probably had the most comprehensive um, black agenda, I think, of, of of any other candidate, even more than um, Kamala Harris, frankly. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, I'm uh, I know Joe, but, you know, Joe Biden is not the ideal candidate. But if you're in a swing state and you're in an area where your vote really matters and you really, you know, and you're in a Trump kind of control district, I do implore you to at least consider um giving your vote to Joe Biden only just for the simple fact of uh, at least begin the beginnings of the decline of white supremacy and whatnot in this country. Other things coming in, uh, GDMC, I want a Kristen Wiig cover of Cop Killer. <laughs> I think that I, <laughs> I don't think you're going to get it if I had to guess. <laughs> Anthony Crotty says there was protests outside the U.S. Embassy here in Ireland. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, outside of the U.S. Embassy. I wonder what part of Ireland the U.S. Embassy is. I would guess Dublin, but that's just ignorance speaking because I really don't know. Prince that wasn't promised says, hate Biden, but Ginsburg is retiring next election. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I I know a lot of this is about the Supreme Court and what mm -hmm. we have to do there. And But again, like, Nobody wants to be feel like they're voting for the lesser of two evils, but that is the situation that we, if you, if that is the situation you feel you find yourself in, then there's only one option. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, going back into the stream labs, I know we got to get out of here pretty soon, but a couple more things coming in. Um, Glenn Caesar said, cause Glenn likes to do this RB three. He says, here are some food related questions for RB three. I hope you find them as fun answers because they're completely non-serious. Uh, so there's four food related questions that he likes to know from our guests. The first one is, do you have a guilty pleasure food or meal? Um, oh, guilty pleasure. Um, I know we go all over the place on this show. It's like, yeah. <laughs> um, guilty pleasure. I mean, I don't know if it's guilty. I don't feel guilty about anything that I eat. So, but I could just say I have, a, I have a weird affinity for pancakes. I don't know what it is. I just love pancakes. So. Okay. So that definitely answers the next question, which is what's your favorite breakfast food? So I'm assuming pancakes. Um, oh, yeah. and then for your sure. favorite, favorite dessert also pancakes. Um, <laughs> honestly, maybe, uh, if not pancakes, at least banana bread. Oh, I love banana bread. Yeah. I, I made some during this pandemic. Um, favorite late night snack is the last question. Um, wrist crackers. Ritz crackers. I love Ritz, but recently I've been a Triscuits girl. I'm not going to lie. I've mm. been really into the Triscuits, but Ritz are great too. Um, yeah. I think I see our friend Janine the Machine in here right now. Janine. Janine, welcome to the party today. Uh, what yeah. a, when I say party, woohoo. Uh, Janine yeah. says, scary to think about how many people have died at the hands of police that were probably covered up for years before we had smartphones. I mean, I don't even think there's a, a number that it's, that it, I mean, it must be thousands and thousands. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I agree. And, and, and to anybody, you know, there's been a long time thing for a long time about not believing people of color or not believing women. Um, and it's just like, I feel like the people who question people like that are shady ass people themselves. Because mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. nobody, no, who the fuck is lying about this stuff? Um, right. 
But anyway, that's a, a different conversation, I guess. Breed X says, uh, guilty pleasure food, Popeyes. <laughs> uh, I feel that. Uh, yeah, I like Popeyes. Wow, I could definitely go for some chicken right now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> y'all weren't quarantined. I know. Y'all weren't curfewed right now. Jeez. I am I am curfewed, so I will be making myself ramen noodles for lunch because you know that shit's cheap and easy. I love me some ramen. Yeah. That, is, that is saving my life right now. It's like the best cheap, easy thing. Uh, Grumpy G says, all support to Black Lives Matters. Uh, you keep doing what you're doing. Love from Sweden. We appreciate that. Thank you with your love from Sweden. Um, Glenn commented again. He said, thanks again, Roxy and RB3, for giving us a great show today. Two thumbs up. You're both the best. Roxy, I definitely think you should have RB3 back on as soon as you're able to coordinate your schedules. Keep laughing and smiling. Uh, we need we need them both. I agree that we need that. And uh, it's a hard fucking time to laugh or smile during, but mm-hmm. I'll definitely try to do my best. Um, and yeah, I know that we we do have to get out of here, but RB3, you're working on a ton of stuff right now. Where can people find you, support you, um, and all of that and all the places that you are? Um, yeah, you could just find me on Twitter, Instagram. I think it's you know right here in the lower third, at director RB3. Um, and then you could also, um, look, look at my YouTube channel first cut. Um, we do movie reviews, podcasts. Um, it's the home of the meeting up podcast, um, that we do every week. Um, this week is going to be Meeting up podcast. What's that? Oh, oh, well, let me tell you, Roxy. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I uh, actually know this week we're actually having a big guest. It's funny. Cause almost like every week we're almost like, yeah, we have a bigger guest, but this week is a, like actually a really cool guest. Um, it's the director of Chronicle and Fantastic Four in the new movie Capone, Josh Trank. No He's way. Coming on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's going to be, this is going to be really, really great. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jake, Jake Acovetta. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, please subscribe at that, that link down below. And um, yeah, like I said, Josh Trank, he's going to tell us all about Fantastic Four and the process behind making it and Chronicle and obviously his new movie, Capone. We spent like a whole hour talking about Capone. Um, which is actually a really cool film. And um, so, yeah, please check that out. And then also we're having a live stream this Thursday. So, what, what? yeah, what yeah. Uh, five, five o'clock, five, five, uh, five o'clock PS, P, 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 T, PSD, P, what is it called? I, here's PST. the thing. I don't know because I said PST forever and then I got a bunch of tweets being like, you know, it's not PST right now. Apparently for half the year we're in PST and for the other half we're in PDT, P. One of them is Pacific Standard Time. The other is Pacific Daylight Time When whenever we uh, change the clocks. So I don't know which fucking one we are. So now I just say PT. Right. And I take out the middle letter because I don't know. Uh, right. By the way, we haven't been able to talk about this at all, but I know right before I asked you about your hat, which is just so freaking cool. Um, <laughs> but before we get out of here, I didn't get the full story. So it, you said it's actually signed by Spike Lee. Yeah, it's uh it's signed by Spike Lee himself. It not really much of a story behind it. It was just, you know, if you I guess if you ordered it off his website or whatever during a certain time, like he will he was like personally um he'll he'll personally sign it with if you ordered it like on a certain day or something like that. So I had uh just ordered it like that. Spike Lee has always been one of my personal inspirations. Um and um and literally every everything that he's done just in his career is something that I've always aspired to do and kind of, you know, always model myself after. So I, I, I'm a huge fan of Spike and, you know, obviously a uh, big, big supporter of, of, of Malcolm X and his uh, movements and statements and all that kind of stuff too. I think that that hat is so freaking awesome. Uh, and I Thank love you. that you're wearing it today. PLD Paul Denuzio in here, just as much love to everyone. We appreciate that friend. Again, I'll take love where we can get it right now. Um, and Lucas says, I always happy to tune in for RB three. Same. Uh, Yes, Lucas only pops in. Lucas never pops in for Roxy. Lucas only pops in when he likes the guest. So <laughs> clearly, but who wouldn't love RB three? Um, again, uh, I just think you're the best and such a array of light during this time. And I'm uh, always rooting for you. And this platform is always yours whenever you want it uh, for any kind of reason. So thank you for being here today, RB3. And make sure you guys go and follow everything he does. And in case you missed any of that stuff, he tweets about it all. So that is right there mm-hmm. um, at director RB3. 
which is true because one day you're going to be a superstar director, RB3. I know it. Um, and also you. fight on. We haven't even. Oh, yeah. We haven't even acknowledged our USC, our USC connection. Yes, absolutely. Fight, fight on. on. Fight on uh, indeed. What a. What an interesting school we both went to. Right. Um, right. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, all right, guys. Tomorrow for a little bit of housekeeping, um, I think I might do a solo stream. I've been painting. Oh, it's over there. I'd show you. I've been painting this lion for my grandparents. My grandparents are having a really hard time right now. I can only imagine. Grammy is somebody who likes to go out and not likes to, but she's a protester. She is extremely liberal and she wants to be protesting right now. She is 92 years old and I've told her she has to stay home. Um, she struggles staying home. And so I've been painting her a lion. Um, so I think I'm going to keep painting tomorrow with you guys and talk and continue to talk with you about everything going on. And then my friend Tehran is coming on Wednesday. Um, Tehran is an amazing stand up comedian. Uh, who is, I'm so excited because I think some of you guys know him, but for those of you who don't, he's had residency at the Laugh Factory for quite some time. And uh, he's just incredible. And I know he has a lot to say about Black Lives Matters. And, uh, you know, he's half black, half Persian and half Jewish, actually. So, you know, part of my tribe, go Tehran. And I can't wait to have him on. And then I'll continue to look at your guys' suggestions and who you guys want to have on the show. Um, so just let me know because I'm open and, and available for whoever you guys want to highlight and shine a light on to. But for now, a round of applause for RB3. Thank you. Thank That's you. Thank you. you so Everybody much. Everybody at home is doing it with me. Uh, I love you guys a lot. And I guess uh, it's not original that I say it here, but stay safe. <laughs>